Good Shabbos and good morning. What a special day. They say it's the most wonderful time of the year, or at least they sing it. Hanukkah is just a week away, and menorahs are popping up this week, perhaps throughout the city in public spaces, atop cars, in banks and stores, on postage stamps, in cartoons, and now even Hallmark movies this year. The story of Hanukkah, the miraculous military victory of our Jewish people 2,000 years ago in the land of Israel, defeating Greek oppressors, when we rededicated our holy temple, celebrates with the lighting of the Chanukiah, the Hanukkah menorah, each night in our home. The rabbis of the Talmud clearly state the reason that we light the menorah is what's called Persume Nisa, Aramaic for publicizing the miracle. And that's why our menorah is lit at sundown just when it begins to get dark. The Chanukiah is placed outside or in the window facing the outdoors, placed there during rush hour, when passers-by will hopefully see the lights and be reminded of the great miracle that God provided for our ancestors. The rabbis say that the original light of Chanukah, that single cruise of oil that should have lasted only one night, still burns today, that it was never extinguished and that it helps us find our way that in a world that is often filled with darkness. The rabbi Nitivot Shalom teaches that there is nothing more than God precious, there's nothing more precious than God's light in our world, and that the Syrian Greeks attempted to beat into our Jewish psyche the belief that that light was gone, plunging our ancestors into darkness. But no message could be more devastating and frightening but once a year, the rabbi teaches, Nitivot Shalom, that on Hanukkah, God's light sparks and rekindles. It flares up with a unique strength, illuminating even the darkest of times, reminding us that with light, we can survive anything. The rabbis of the Talmud, after discussing where we should place our menorah and the timing that we should light it to ensure that it would literally get the most attention, Warn us with this precaution. If you are living in dangerous times, it's recommended to remove the menorah from outdoors, remove it from a front window to protect yourself. Bring the Hanukkiah inside and only light it where you can see it and no one else in the world can. Are we at that point right now in our history here in America? where we have to remove the menorah from public space, from the front corner of our street, from anywhere public from our front windows. It happened that in 1986, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson, began to push for public Hanukkah lightings throughout America. He wrote this in 1986. Now in a land that vigorously protects the right of every one to practice their religion freely, freely. Jews are once again lighting menorahs in public to proclaim the universal message of religious freedom. These public menorah lightings confirm the basic beliefs of our founding fathers, themselves victims of religious persecution. Indeed, freedom to practice religion became inscribed in the laws of the land, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. This First Amendment to the Constitution guarantees individuals the right to practice their religion without fear. That's from 1986, the Lubavitcher Rebbe. So I ask us today, in 2022, is this the same world we are living in? When it seems almost every day we are victims to anti-Semitism, students are attacked on college campus, celebrities proclaim that it is time for Jews to forgive Hitler, and to love Hitler. When school districts propose curriculums to teach our children both sides of the Holocaust, whatever that means. When these public attacks are met with silence, which to us means agreement and complicity. In America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, is it time to move our Hanukkah out indoors, to take off our yarmulkes, to tuck in our Jewish stars, to shelter as the darkness of hatred, anti-Semitism, and hate 
continues to grow at an alarming rate. Just this week in Washington, D.C., the second gentleman, Doug Emhoff, convened the White House's roundtable on anti-Semitism, and he opened with these words, quote, let me be clear, words matter. People are no longer saying the quiet parts out loud, they are screaming them. We cannot normalize this. We all have an obligation to condemn these vile acts. We must not stay silent. There is no either or. There are no two sides. Everyone must be against this. As long as I have this microphone, he said, I am going to speak out against hate, bigotry, and lies. As you heard, our Torah portion this week, Vayishlach, focuses on the theme of wrestling, when Jacob wrestles with the angel. It is in this Torah portion where our people are given the name Yisrael, which means the one who struggles with God. Yisrael, the one who wrestles. Yisrael, the one who overcomes and perseveres. Yisrael. The question we must ask ourselves today is, do we let this rising tide of anti-Semitism determine how we practice and celebrate our holiday? Of course, safety is our highest priority, pikuach nefesh. The rabbis prioritize that we should never put our lives in danger, even for Jewish practice. That's why we value security. But have we come to a point in America where menorah placement is more than just a fire safety issue, but a life safety issue? We say that there are two miracles of Hanukkah, the Maccabees military victory of the few over the many, the weak over the mighty, and the second miracle that the oil lasted for eight days. But more, recent, more recently, we say that there is a third miracle of Hanukkah, a miracle of Jewish faith a Jewish determination, of Jewish resilience and hope in the face of darkness and hate. Perhaps the most important one for us today. This one occurred as our ancestors prepared for Hanukkah, when the temple was ready to be dedicated and there was only one single cruise of oil left. If they lit the menorah at that moment, they knew it could only last one day and then the temple would be dark, filled with darkness for a full week until the new oil arrived they could have put it out. They could have waited quietly and silently. This third miracle of Hanukkah is that the Maccabees had the faith and courage to light lamps while dark without knowing what would happen. And the rabbis say that the original light of Hanukkah, that single cruise of oil that should have lasted only one night, that the Maccabees lit with courage, determination, and perseverance still burns to this day. It was never extinguished. It helps us find our way in these dark times because those Jews 2,000 years ago took the chance to light the way for us today. These are special lights, the rabbis say, that have the power to shine light into the darkest parts of our world when we feel alone and scared and hopeless, that perhaps no one else really cares about us. No one understands us. We see the light of the menorah the original light from the Maccabees still burning with faith, resilience, and termination, and it remains in us. The great Rabbi Rav Kook taught that each of us can be a living Hanukkah candle. We have the power to spread light to others, share our inner light in order to better the world. So, it's not a question for me where we should place our large public menorah that our synagogue owns that will be delivered midweek. We're not going to put it right next to our building. We're going to put it out on the street corner, prominently standing on the corner of Fairmount and Brainerd. For at this time, we know that shining our light, shining a light on anti-Semitism, that is the way that we can live a vibrant and proud Jewish life here in America. May we each strive in the coming eight days of Hanukkah to find ways to share the joys of Judaism, the light that our religion, our faith, and our way teach us so that we can shine light for others as well. And may we remember the lights of those who gave their lives so that we can be openly, publicly, and joyfully celebrating Judaism and that we can share our light for good. Shabbat Shalom.